Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I had a whole bunch of people send me this story, thank you very much, from Colorado. And you know, if you watch a lot of TV, you get the impression that the police can come to a crime scene and gather some evidence. And they send it off to the crime lab. And the crime lab looks at it and goes, okay, this, this proves who did it. And they go into court and the technicians get up on the stand and testify to it. And the jury's like, mm-hmm, that's it. Carved in stone. And by the way, it's good if you're on a jury and it's so clear to you who did it that you don't feel bad like me, I've made a mistake, right? Well, of course, that assumes that the crime lab is doing everything properly. Now, we've heard of crime labs that did sloppy work. And here's a story about a former scientist who manipulated data in over 600 cases. And now you wonder, are there more? What's going to happen to those cases? So Morgan Whitley wrote this for KDVR. The Colorado Bureau of Investigation has completed its internal affairs investigation into a former DNA scientist and found that the scientist had manipulated data in the DNA testing process. So we've all, like I said, come to believe that DNA testing is rock solid. This is his DNA. This is not his DNA. Or or if it was done by this person here, we don't know. So they released the findings for investigation on the woman on Friday. In November of last year, it was reported that she was no longer working with the CBI. In September 2023, CBI discovered anomalies, anomalies in her DNA testing work. And in October, she was placed on administrative leave. She'd been working there for 29 years, 29 years. After several months of investigation, CBI said the report revealed that she had manipulated data in the DNA testing process, posting incomplete test results in some cases. The discovery puts all of her work in question. All of her work in question. Remember, she'd been there for 29 years. CBI is in the process of reviewing all her previous work for data manipulation to ensure the integrity of all CBI laboratory results. The investigation from CBI was dated February 26th and found that she had omitted material facts in official criminal justice records tampered with DNA testing results by omitting some of those results, and violated the CBI's code of conduct and CBI laboratory policies, ranging from data retention to quality control measures. Now, some people are wondering if they quite got the grasp of this, and I want to make sure you got something else from this. And that is that when DNA testing is done, or fingerprint testing is done, or blood sample testing is done, It's done by a person who's running tests, and those tests aren't brought into court and don't testify for themselves. Someone's got to come into court and say, yes, I am a CBI technician. I work in the crime lab. What do you do? I I do uh, uh, DNA testing on material that's brought in from crime scenes and so on. Okay, describe the process, how long you've been doing it, blah, 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 blah. That person is a witness. That person is a witness. And so one of the things, and I taught trial practice for 10 years, one of the things I can tell you about people testifying is that you cross-examine them on what they've testified about, right? So they get up and they testified that they saw the light was a certain color at a traffic intersection. Okay, well, you can cross-examine them about that. But you can also always cross-examine on credibility. So if there is a witness that is not credible, you can cross-examine them on that. And likewise, if they are credible, you can still cross-examine them and make sure they're credible. So this woman here, if she were put in the stand today, could be cross-examined on the fact that in her 29 years of work at CBI's Forensic Services, she was discovered to have been manipulating data, et cetera, et cetera. And so now that this evidence is out, There are all kinds of people who are looking at convictions going, wait a second, this person was convicted based on her testimony. And we didn't know that she was manipulating data, but now we do. So unfortunately, there's going to be a whole bunch of new trials. And I say unfortunately because these are cases where people might not have deserved to get locked up. Or at the very least, they didn't get a fair trial. Now, getting a new trial is good news for those of you who were convicted badly But it's unfortunate that it happened in the first place. So according to the CBI, 652 cases between 2008 and 2023 were identified as being affected by her data manipulation. 652 cases going back to 2008. 
2008. CBI said the data was manipulated the following ways. She deleted and altered data that uh, concealed her tampering with controls. She deleted data that concealed her failure to troubleshoot issues within the testing process. And she failed to provide thorough documentation in the case record related to certain tests performed. Per the investigation, CBI claims the manipulation was intentional. It was intentional. She didn't make a mistake. She was doing this on purpose. The review did not find that she falsified DNA matches or otherwise fabricated DNA profiles. She instead deviated from standard testing protocols and cut corners, calling into question the reliability of the testing she conducted. According to policies and procedures, she should have conducted additional testing to ensure the reliability of results in these affected cases. An attorney for her issued a statement saying she's been a loyal and dedicated forensic scientist with the Colorado Bureau of Investigation for close to 30 years. She's worked with and trained generations of prosecutors, scientists, and law enforcement agents over those years. I hope she didn't train them to do as she did. While the allegations resulting from the internal investigation alleged that she deviated from standard protocols and cut corners, the findings of the internal investigation support her earlier statements. She's never created or reported any false inculpatory DNA matches or exclusions, nor has she testified falsely in any hearing or trial resulting in a false conviction or just unjust imprisonment. To the extent that the findings of the internal investigation come to question the rest of her work over 29 years, she will continue to cooperate with law enforcement to preserve the integrity of her work that resulted in true and just criminal justice findings, whether arrests, convictions, or exonerations. So she was connected to some high-profile cases, including one involving Kobe Bryant that you may have heard about. Uh, there's also another murder case that's high profile and so on. And CBI said the anomalies were found while reviewing a sampling of cases as part of an internal process. So it does show you that the CBI as an organization does find this stuff on their own and they should, that's, that's what they're doing. How she's been doing this for 29 years is actually the bigger question. They caught her now after 29 years, and her attorney is saying, look, she may have cut corners, but she didn't put anybody in jail that didn't belong there or vice versa. Well, here's the problem, though. For you to get a fair trial, should you be charged with a crime and put on trial, you have the right to know all of the evidence that the other side's using against you, i.e. the state, and you also need to know uh, any evidence they have their hands on that might help show your lack of guilt, <laughs> You're not proving your innocence. You're simply showing that you're not guilty. And so there's a distinction, trust me. So here the problem is that she got on the stand and testified and said, I did these tests. I did these tests correctly. The test showed this. We now know that two of those three statements were correct and the one in the middle was wrong. I did these tests. I didn't do them correctly. Here are the results. Now, of course, here are the results that's called into question. Because how accurate are they? She cut corners. And so this is a very serious issue. And so right now, they're going through files, that is, the prosecutors are, looking for cases that she worked on where her testimony was material, and especially cases where it was really hinged on what she testified to. And they're going to realize, okay, we're probably going to be seeing new trials in many of these cases. And, of course, if you were convicted after she testified against you, likewise, you're going to be calling up your attorney right now going, hey, I, I, I need you to take a look at this and see if we can't get me a new trial. But, of course, this dates back to 2009, was it? 2008, something like that. Uh, there are probably people who were put in prison and served their time and got out already. And now they're like, wait, I, I, I shouldn't have gone to prison in the first place, maybe. You know, so this is a cry and shame. And some people are going to say, wait, Steve, if this was your job... You're getting paid to do your job. Why would you cut corners like that? And I don't know how to speak to this specific case, but I can tell you that there are people out there in law enforcement who start to believe that their hunches are magical, meaning that I don't have any evidence against this person, but I know they did it. And next thing you know, they're going out and they're trying to construct a case around somebody, despite the fact that the Evidence doesn't point that way. And so for all you know, uh, people may have come to her with evidence going, hey, look, we're trying to link this guy to this thing. You know, does this help us? That's the fear that she may have said, uh, let me see what I can do for you. 
And so it could also be pure laziness. It could just be that she's lazy, okay? And she could just be, you know something, I think this is the right result. I'm not going to double check. That could be it too. We don't know. But the problem is that if you got convicted based on her testimony, it doesn't matter what her motives were. The fact of the matter is she did sloppy work, and sloppy work put you in jail. And it probably shouldn't have. So this is scary. And I'm glad when they catch it, but I'm pretty certain, and I've been doing this show now for almost 10 years, <laughs> I'm pretty certain I've done stories about this before, where, where either uh, evidence storage was compromised, and, and if you watch TV, you know this. If there's a piece of evidence that's got to be admitted in court, they go through the chain of custody, okay? So a police officer sees it at the scene of the crime, photographs it, very carefully bags it, labels it, initials his label, and carries it back to the police station where he checks it into evidence, where he hands it to another officer who then puts their initials on it and sticks it in an evidence locker, locks it, and keeps the key. And then it gets sent out for testing. Same thing. Somebody comes by, they check it out, they initial it, they take it to a lab, a lab technician signs for it, lab technician hands it back. And so when it goes to court, Someone's got to get up there and testify to all these different steps to prove that no one tampered with it along the way. And usually, it's done correctly. And every now and then we hear stories about, oh, it turns out that anybody who wanted to go traipse around inside the evidence room, and by the way, if they had cash in there, you could borrow it. <laughs> as long as you paid most of it back eventually before the person went to trial. And you hear crazy stories like that, but keep in mind that across... The U.S., there's probably 50 organizations like this, one per state, right? The Michigan State Police, for instance, they've got a crime lab. And so when you hear about one of them who's got one technician who's gone rogue, <laughs> they ain't all bad, and they caught this one. But again, you simply look at it and go 600 cases dating back 15 or 16 years. And that's going to be a mess to straighten out. So that's happening in Colorado. Thanks to everyone who sent it. CBI says that former scientists manipulated data in over 600 cases from KDVR. Morgan Whitley wrote it. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Sometimes the road less traveled is less traveled for a reason.